Hey everybody, I uh, just wanted to have a quick look at this uh, keyboard again. Uh, there's still a few issues with it, well as you probably saw on the previous video, the, the LCD is still a bit um, not the best, So, uh, but there's also some other issues that I'm going to have a quick look at. Um, firstly the, the floppy drive doesn't seem to be working so I'm going to have a quick look at that. Um, and I've also got um, some new um, or replacement PLDs which apparently fix a few bugs, hardware bugs on, on the system uh, and those go, get installed on uh, on here so uh, I'll have that off and um, check what revision these are and, uh, and put them in if they're newer For those of you who are interested, um, there's a quick picture of the um, daughter board. Um, we've got uh, a Motorola 68340FE25, so that'll be a variant of the 68000, obviously running at 25 megahertz. We've got one of these uh, PLDs which I'll be swapping out in a moment. Got some flash memory. The memory here, probably. I guess I'd, that'd be DRAM. I think there might actually be some SRAM on here somewhere because um, things are battery backed, so uh, that's probably on here somewhere. Or it might be on the uh, the other board. Um, got a few additional connectors on here. Um, sampling board, so on the 2500S system, the sampling board would plug in here. PRAM expansion, that's for expanding the um, internal storage for programs and um, the sequencer. Um, it's not for storage of the sample sampling that's done on on the other board, which I'll show you in a moment. So on this main board, uh, we've got a whole bucket load of uh, VLSI um, A6. That'll be uh, a guess where all the magic happens. Um, we've got uh, two more PLDs here. Um, you've got uh, old 30-pin SIMs for the sample memory. Um, now on here you'll also you'll have the the internal ROM, which I would suspect to be these four here. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much it does have. I'll have to look that up. Um, right next to that you've got um, the ROM expansion. Um, you can add in various uh, sample options. For this does actually use um, SCSI. You can actually put an internal hard disk into here somewhere. Active um, SCSI termination on there looks, I'd say, a little bit bodged in that. Somebody forgot something somewhere, I'm sure, because you wouldn't normally do it like that. That I would suspect is floppy disk controller, given that's the cable to the floppy drive. What I'm going to do is just pop these out uh, and drop in these new PLDs. Um, switch on and hopefully it will still work.
Okay, well that all seems to be working. I had to reset the memory uh, on it, but uh, that does appear to be working still, which is good news. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I've actually got uh, a new floppy drive. This is one of my uh, buying and stash away for um, for the right moment. I bought this probably about 10 years ago. Um, so I can give it a try with this brand new floppy disk and um, see whether that, that's what the problem is. Okay, so uh, I've had a play around with the floppy disk. I can't get it to work at all. Um, whatever I do doesn't change anything. I've tried the uh, the new one. That does exactly the same thing. Um, what I have done um, off camera was to go around and just check the voltages and I've noticed there's, uh, there's no 12 volts coming out of here. This is the connector that runs down to the floppy drive to supply the power um, and there's only 5 volts on there. So uh, given that you would normally expect to see ground 5 and 12 volts on there then that might be the issue. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a bit disappointing really. I was sort of hoping I'd make a bit of progress on this today, but um, suddenly not. Um, unfortunately, as I said in my first video, this is a bit of a basket case, this keyboard. Well, maybe we'll get there in the end. See you next time.